Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome to our PD. Our PD today, um, we're going to look at using the three modes of communication in order to engage students in learning. And we are doing this. Um, those standards, you will find them also in the world language standards from Act 4. Um, so we just hit the, so we are following the professional development norms that we always do for our PD, be committed, be responsible, be respectful and be safe. Um, just so you remember that we are always uh, following um, Kenyan's district um, standards framework. Um, and uh, most of what we're going to do today is going to have to do with um, standards of instruction and some evidence-based instructional priorities. So it's really in the academic section. Our learning intention and success criteria the learning intention will be, I'm learning about the three modes of communication and the activities that I can provide my students. The rationale, um, we are doing this in order to increase students' uh, to, uh, active engagement. And for the success criteria, I know I have learned it when I can incorporate uh, the activities that support the three modes of communication in my teaching. So, our agenda today will be to look at language in action. Why are you? Why are we using the three modes of communication, and what are they? Um, we're going to look uh, uh, more precisely at the interpretive or receptive mode of communication. We're going to define them, look how to use it, and some examples. So we're going also to uh, to look at the interpersonal mode of communication. Um, what it is, how to use it, and the examples, and finally, the presentational modes of communication, what it is, how to use it, and some examples. And after that, it will be your turn to try to um, incorporate those codes of, uh, codes of modes of communication into your um, daily lesson, and I'll show you an example on how you can do this. Um, the purpose, why are we doing this, is to be able to um, use the language in action. So we need to have, uh, um, we need to engage students to go beyond the traditional role as responder to the teacher's question. We need students to interact in a classroom. We need for students to provide opportunity so they can use the language in a meaningful interaction with others. And we need also as teacher to provide opportunity for our students to engage in real life tasks in a non-threatening environment in which our students have an affective filter who is lowered. And so if we do that repetitively in our class, the students are going to become more and more confident in their language skills and be able to feel better on how to use the language. Um, so my first question to you is, what do you guys know about the three modes of communication? On a scale of one to five, what do you think? Could you define them, for example? Could you give examples or um, you are just learning them today, which is also completely fine. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna, we're gonna say, what are they? How are we going to define them? How are we going to, to differentiate between the three modes of communication? And how our three modes of communication also relate to our instructional priority, especially to the opportunity to respond because this is exactly what they are. And our three modes of communication, the goal for it is we are using it in order also to increase the language production in our classroom and to increase also the proficiency level of our students. So here are our three modes of communication who are defined by Act 4. You have the interpretive mode or receptive for American Sign Language. You have the interpersonal or the interactive. And you have the presentational or the productive mode of communication. The first one, 
Why are we using those three modes of communication? We are using them in order to make content more comprehensible to students. We are also using them in a way for students to notice the language and to learn through the content for the content, because we're going to use the language in order to be able to learn more language. When we're talking about making a text more comprehensible using the activity of the three modes of communication, so what, what are your activities? So the first one is what is the purpose of your activity? What are the students expected to achieve by the end of the unit? How will your students be assessed? What should students know for this unit? What support will be used to help students master the content? What activity will be used to access the text and build students' knowledge? So as you develop those activity in all three modes of communication, and we're going to go, we're going to see them in details in a few minutes, think of those questions when you have to apply to create those activity for your students. So the first um, mode of communication that we're going to look at is the interpretive mode of communication. The interpretive mode of communication, when we think about it, it's really, it's a one-way listening, reading, or viewing. Um, it does not require a response or a reaction in real time. And it can be on familiar or an, on unfamiliar um, context. And the interpretive mode is when it's also called the receptive mode. It's when basically it's all the internal processing that we, we do. So basically you're going to look for a text or you're going to look for a pic an image or you're going to look for an infographic for, for a student, for, for your class. And that visual that you're gonna to present to the class will introduce the students to the class. The students are going to look, read, listen, or watch something and basically get information out of it. So basically think of this interpretive mode as the place where your students are going to acquire their knowledge. It is really an internal processing. In this, in this mode of communication, in the receptive mode of communication, it's exactly what it is. Students are receiving the knowledge. So they're gonna listen, they're gonna receive information. They're gonna to try to make sense out of the information that they're receiving. They're going to evaluate and they're going to take notes on what they see, what they hear, what they listen to. So this first interpretive mode of communication, it's a very important um, first step because without it, our students cannot get the basic um, uh, information to start in their um, uh, lesson. Um, I'm going to show you here in a little bit more details what it is. It is basically when you're talking about the interpretive mode of communication, you're going to use at authentic resources where your students are going to get information. And this is where your students are going to learn. And they're going to learn by listening, viewing, reading um, uh, from a website, radio, television, podcast, songs, anything that is related and that is appro appropriate to the level of your students for the content that you're teaching. So it is a, an authentic resource. And I'm, I'm pointing out the importance of the authentic resources because this is where you you want students to be engaged. You don't want something to be outdated. What it could look like, it could be I read a text or I listen to a, uh, to a, a radio or I read a, um, or I look at a website and I can answer um, a true and false question. I can do a multiple choice on it. I can get the information from a text and I can create and I can set them up in a graphic organizer. 
um, I can annotate annotate the text, and I can also cut do some perhaps some uh, category where this belongs to this, this doesn't belong in the chapter. So, um, as you as you um as you are doing your um interpretive and receptive activities, make sure that with you have a purpose for the activity and you do have an activity that goes with the reading. It's not just reading for just for just for looking at a text. Is I read, I listen, I watch to get information. So students need to be able to get some information out of those authentic resources that you're going to present for them. So as a teacher, you have to look for those interpretive mode of uh, the material that you're going to present to your students. Remember that in the interpretive mode, your students are going to read, listen, watch, and they're going to get some information out of those materials that you're going to give them. Okay. So right here, when we're looking at the first, at the first one, it's a one-way communication, reading, listening, viewing. So your, your students are going to get the information out of the materials that you're going to give them. This is why it's very important to give them some authentic material and that you also provide the scaffold to support their task that you want them to do in that one. But in this way, the students are working individually. They can share afterwards, that's fine. But at first, let them, let, let them discover the, the text that you're using, okay? So this is your interpretive mode of communication. The second, so, um, think of what, uh, before we go into the next one, think of what task and activity you can create to provide your students with a, a great learning experience. Remember, it's reading, um, listening, and viewing authentic material where the students are able to extract some content in order to be used for the rest of the lesson. Okay. So what is that going to look like in your classroom? The second mode of communication is the interpersonal mode of communication. And on this one, this one is the mode of communication that is spontaneous and where we have we see the production of language. So it is the interpersonal mode of communication. It's a two-way exchange because the students are going to exchange the information that they have received in the first part. And they're going to, um, out of the document that you gave them, out of all the authentic material that you gave them, the students have taken notes. They have done some, um, they have read, they have listened to uh, materials, and they're going to, now on this step, they're going to exchange the information. Um, they're going to talk to each other, it's, it's spontaneous. Um, and it's going to be, uh, and there's going to be a follow up, and students are going to react. Oh, yes, I agree. No, I don't agree, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, in this part, also, um, it is also um, important that um, the students have the that they look when they have a partner or if, even if they're seated in group, that they are focusing on the message, which is fluency, that even um, if communication fails, uh, that they can find another way to express what they're trying to say and help each other. This is where developing the environment of, uh, of a safe classroom environment is very important. So it is especially in that mode of communication, the interpersonal, where you have an exchange of communication between students this is where you needed to make sure that you have created a really safe environment for your students. And just, just to review your um, slides. Um, before we going that fast, uh, let's see this. So, what uh, what interpersonal mode of communication? What it is? It's it's 
in that mode of communication, you're going to share the information, you're going to exchange an opinion. There's no right or wrong, it's just an exchange of opinion. Students are going to interact with others through speaking or writing in order to communicate. Um, it could be, it could look like a, a Zoom, a Canvas discussion, a Google Docs discussion. It could be a partner, a small a partner talk. It could be a small group discussion. It could be a quick interview. It could be a survey. But the most important part in this interpersonal part is that once the students have shared the information they have received from the first part, um, then um, the, again, there's no right or wrong, but it is important to come back as a whole class and to unpack the information that is gathered. Um, for example, um, students could, uh, if they look at a visual, they might see something and then other students might have a different perspective and view it in a different way. So you need to go from group to group or from partners to partners and ask them to share what they thought the, the, the information that they've learned um, was about. And again, there's no right or wrong. And what is great with this tool in the interpersonal mode of communication is that students uh, will be presented basically with a, a variety of different perspectives. And so they can actually um, see how what they see is, is it's a, only one way of viewing the information and perhaps they're going to learn something else about the uh, that their partner uh, view it differently so it's it's important to um, share and to unpack all the information that is gathered okay so first the teacher selected the material in the first part the students get the information out of the authentic material in the inter interpersonal mode of communication, the students are going to share the information. Again, there is no right and there's no wrong. It's just an opinion, as long as we can value, we can support our opinion and give them sentence frame in order to help them um, talk about their opinion, to exchange their ideas. It's, it's, it, it is okay, just give them some scaffold in order to help them go further in the discussion. But don't forget to come back and unpack the information for the whole class. So the whole class can have a view of what the different perspective, the different ideas that came up with everything. Um, so again, when you do this interpersonal mode of communication, what does it look like in your classroom? What kind of task activity can you create to support your students' learning? And remember, just, just a little bit before, we so you can use Canvas, you can Google, Google Doc, you can be a, a partner, a partnership, a group work. It could be, um, it, it could be just um, notes on the uh, notes on the paper. As long as you share all that as a whole class, so the whole class can see the different. Uh, and it it's so important for the for them for the students to see the different perspective and to to see the different opinions that can uh, come up from different way of um, interpreting a text. So. That's that's the strength in it. And finally, the presentational mode of communication, which is our third mode of communication. In this one, basically, we are using all the information that you guys have gathered in the interpretive mode of communication. Then you use what you have, what the students have learned right here to go to person to person. Yeah, and, and in the interpersonal, again, it's any combination of speaking, listening, reading, writing. Again, it is an exchange, it's spontaneous. Um, there's no right and there's no wrong. Um, give them support. And this task, the interpersonal, builds onto the interpretive task. And, and this one, the interpretive, the interpersonal, are go, you're going to use the element, the discussion, the, you're going to use the material from the interpretive, you're going to use a discussion from the interpersonal to finally do the presentational mode of communication where students are going, it's again a one way this time, and the students are going to um, uh, create, edit, a speaking or a writing task. It is uh, make sure that you understand that in this mode of communication, the presentational mode of communication, it is a formal. You have to use the formal speaking and writing in order for this final task. 
Your speaking will look like a debate. Your writing is going to look like an essay, like a uh, newspaper article. We are not in this in this way of doing in your presentational mode of communication. And I'm going back right now to our slides. In our presentational mode of communication, it's a one-way speaking and writing. I am not asking your opinion. I am presenting what I have learned. So this is how you have to see the presentational mode of communication. So the students are going to basically use the information that they have gathered, the opinion that they have exchanged, and they're going to uh, be able to do a presentation. Um, for this, um, in, and in order to support your students, make sure that, again, you have a clear objective for what will be the task as a presentational mode of communication. Do you have a rubric that's going to help your students um, be able to complete the task? Um, your instruction could be the, the activity that support the objective have to be meaningful and accessible. Could we do we do, have you done enough scaffold to help the students um, build? Are all the activity building on to the presentational? Are do do they have do they have all the tools they need in order to do the presentational mode of communication? This presentational mode of communication basically. It's your culminating uh, project, is your final assessment of the unit. So basically think of it as, have you done all the activity and all the activity building up also in, in, um, in rigor in order for your students to, to think and to go deeper. This is why the part where students are at the beginning where they're exchanging, where they're getting information and the most important part where they're exchanging ideas with a partner. Um, so they have different perspective in order to be able to present um, something um, uh, for their project. So this is how you have to see the three modes of communication. The next, our next slide is, so the your presentational um, modes of communication um, is a speaking and or writing using an appropriate academic vocabulary and social register. It's a formal type of register. It is not an email. An email is not a presentational mode of communication. Okay, It is an interpersonal mode of communication. Um, what it can look like in your classroom, it could be um, produce formal text using a variety of techniques. You can do invitation, informational flyers, pamphlets, posters, and so on and so forth. So you can do different kind of writing, and, and all that can also be um, a debate. It could be a, it, it could not be a debate because the debate is not presentational. It's not a back and forth. Remember that the presentational is only one way. Um, so you can do a speech. A speech will be a, a, a speaking presentational mode of communication. Um, so think what kind of task and activity can you create to provide your students um, with a learning experience in order to do that presentational mode of communication in your class. So from the presentation that we just did, what is something that you learned that you didn't know before about the three modes of communication? Is there something that you still would like to know? Something that can help you learn today and why? And what kind of extra challenge do you, do you see and why? And uh, we are done. Thank you.